let's solve a few problems on monohybrid cross. Here's the first one. A farmer mates a cattle with horns to a heterozygous cattle without horns. Let's quickly draw that. Mates a cattle with horns to a cattle without horns. Okay, now if no horns is, the, is dominant to horns, that means the gene or the allele that's responsible for no horns, that is dominant to the allele that's responsible for giving horns, what is the chance that the offspring has horns? We need to figure out what is the chance that the kid will have horns. All right, how do we do this? My first step is to first write down the genotype, meaning write down what the alleles look like. Well, for this one, it's easy. It's given that it's heterozygous. Heterozygous means one capital N, one small n. So for this one, I know it is one capital N, one small n. And it makes sense because it has one capital N, that's why it's dominating and it's not getting any horns. But what about this one? It's not mentioned whether it is homozygous or heterozygous. Well, it doesn't have to mention it because the only way you can have horns is to have both of them small n. You need both alleles to have horns because they are recessive. Think if you had one capital N, then this wouldn't have any horns because that would dominate. So the fact that horns is recessive automatically means that the only way to get this is to have cap small n small n. Okay, now to figure out what the offspring would look like, let's use the law of segregation. The law of segregation says that when gametes are formed, which is sperms and egg cells are formed, then some sperm cells will get this one, other sperm cells will get this one, some egg cells will get this one, other egg cells will get this one. All right, so let's draw that. So we have the sperm cells, or both the sperm cells will get n and n, small n, small n. What about egg cells? Some egg cells will get this capital N, some egg cells will get small n, and now we can do the table. Great idea for you to pause the video, complete the Punnett square, this is called the Punnett square, complete this table, and see what the answer is going to be. All right, if this sperm fertilizes this egg, we get capital N, small n. If this sperm fertilizes this egg, we get, again, small capital N, small n. If this sperm fertilizes this egg, we get small n, small n. And if this sperm fertilizes this egg, we get small n, small n. And now let's see. Wherever there is a capital N, because it's dominant, we will get no horns. So we'll get no horns here, no horns here. And these are both recessive, we'll get horns here, horns here. And so you can see, we have two out of four offsprings who will get horns. So the answer is two out of four, but if you want that, if, if, you, if you want it to be into percentage, you multiply it by 100 to get 50%. So there's a 50% chance that the offsprings will have horns. All right, let's do one more. All right, why don't you try pausing the video and see if you can solve this entire question yourself. Okay, we are given that in muscles, brown coloring B is dominant and blue coloring B is recessive. A homozygous brown muscle crosses with a blue muscle. So let me just directly show that. A brown muscle crosses with a blue muscle. What percentage of offsprings are expected to be blue? Again, the first step is to try and figure out what the genotype is. So I'm given that in muscles, uh, okay, it's given that a homozygous brown muscle. Since I'm given it's homozygous, both the alleles must be same, so brown muscle, so this must have both capital B, capital B. What about this one? It's not given whether the blue muscle is homozygous or heterozygous, but just like in the previous case, since blue coloring is recessive, the only way to get a blue muscle is if both the alleles are blue. So that means it has to be small b. Because even if one allele was capital B, brown, then the whole thing would dominate, the brown would dominate and this would have become brown. So you understand that, right? Okay, so now that we have the genotypes, now we're gonna use the law of segregation to first draw the Punnett square. So for example, if this is the male and let's say the sperms are coming from here, then the sperms will get capital B and capital B because both are capital B. And if this is the female, if this gives you the eggs, then both the eggs will give you small b and small b. And now if we do the Punnett square, what will we get? Well, the, this sperm, when fertilizes with this egg, you get capital B, small b. In fact, you'll get the same thing here as well. When this sperm fertilizes, you get the same thing everywhere. <laughs> so everywhere you get, uh, the same thing, the genotypes is the same, and therefore, what do you end up with? Since capital B is dominating, hey, all of these will end up giving you brown muscles. And therefore, you get 100% brown muscles, but what is asked is what is the percentage of blue? 
Well, if everything is brown, then you get zero blue. So the answer is 0% offsprings will be blue.